Australians are voting in a parliamentary election. Attention is focused on whether the first transfer of power in six years will take place. In Australia on polling day, it's important to get up early. Voting in this country is compulsory, so you're nearly always guaranteed a pretty high turnout. This election is a choice between the Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, and his Labour Party, and the Conservative opposition leader, Tony Abbott. You're up early on uh, polling day. Who are you going for? Liberal Party today. I'm Mr Tony Abbott. That's correct. I'm going for Labour. going for Labour. Why is that? Um, I just believe that for, for me and my lifestyle, that's good. <laughs> Don't know. Just get it done quickly and get out. They're all as bad as one another as far as I'm concerned, so it doesn't matter who gets in. Well, the public has not embraced uh, Tony Abbott and his conservative uh, coalition as a positive uh, act of enthusiasm. It's been uh, driven to him over time by uh, the failures of the Labor Party. Uh, in fact, about half the votes that have deserted Labor since the last election three years ago till today have not gone to the opposition, but are going to a group of fringe parties and some new protest parties, uh, the biggest of which is led by the sort of um, bombastic billionaire uh, mining character who's a very idiosyncratic, and he's picking up quite a few of the protest votes. So it's not a gesture of great confidence in Tony Abbott, who remains an unpopular uh, leader. In fact, he will be the first opposition leader elected to the Prime Ministership uh, from a position of unpopularity, according to the opinion polls, meaning you know, a, a net negative opinion poll rating. Uh, so it's, it's very much a, a, a protest. It's the old adage that oppositions don't win elections, governments lose them. That's exactly what's happening today. As for the international community, Tony Abbott, like uh, all Prime Ministers incoming, uh, learn on the job when it comes to foreign policy, with the single exception of Kevin Rudd, um, who's about to be swept from power, who had a background as a diplomat. Uh, so it will be um, a matter of, uh, of trial and error. There's a big um, uh, policy uh, priority for the incoming government to try to stem the flow of uh, refugees arriving by boat. Uh, and that could put enormous strain on Australia's relationship with Indonesia. Liberal National Party coalition leader Tony Abbott is expected to become the new Prime Minister, polls predicting he'll get 53% of the vote. He's promised to cut foreign aid, axe public sector jobs and remove a tax on carbon emissions. The current Prime Minister, Labour's Kevin Rudd, has suffered from his party's long-running leadership struggle and a slowing economy. He's tried to appeal to traditional Labour values on healthcare, pensions and support for manufacturing industries. I do agree with Mr Rudd on just one thing. We need a new way, but the only way to have a new way is to choose a new government. Both candidates have said they would tighten asylum policy. Rudd said people arriving by boat would be sent to Papua New Guinea as refugees, while Abbott said he'd appoint a military commander to tackle people smugglers and limit asylum seekers to temporary renewable visas. Both policies have been criticized, and some voters are turning their backs on the major parties. Well, the economy is the number one issue on the minds of most Australian voters. Both candidates are promising to strengthen it, but as Andrew Stevens tells us, neither man is long on specifics. Uh, we would, of course, on our side of politics, allow a full conscience vote. Australian leader Kevin Rudd and his opposition counterpart Tony Abbott don't agree on much, but they are united when it comes to defining Australia's key election issue, the economy. This election is about the future strength of our economy and how best to secure it. We will build a stronger economy so that everyone can get ahead. That may sound surprising. After all, this is the so-called miracle economy. More than 20 years of uninterrupted growth. Not even the global financial crisis could end that run. 